Hey, Coach, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you, Tom? Not bad, thanks. Hey, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the Rogers kid did a nice job last week, obviously, on the returns. What was uh, what was the biggest issue on your guys' end? Well, we didn't do, didn't do a very good job of getting off blocks, to be quite honest with you. Right at the point of attack, we got guys, you know, they're grabbing and holding, but the, the, the thing, they'll never call a hold unless we're trying to get off the block. So we we didn't do a good enough job there, not even close. And and we missed two tackles there. Uh, we missed several tackles against him. He's a very good young returner. And, um, you know, they outplayed us on that one play especially, and which is disappointing because I thought we did a really nice job in, uh, in some other phases. We had two huge punts in the fourth quarter. Um, we made all our kicks. Uh, we put pressure on him in our field goal block. Um, you know, but to be quite honest with you, that's the that's the play you remember in a special teams game. Anytime you give up a score, it's it's unacceptable, especially here in Cleveland. Yeah, a big spot there too, obviously, with you guys' yeah. ability to put them away. Um, you you plan any personnel changes on with those groups this week, especially absolutely, absolutely, you- absolutely. We're we're gonna find the right match of guys. I mean, you know, we've talked about it before. We were the number one or number two kickoff team in the National Football League last year, and all of a sudden, yeah. I mean, we don't all of a sudden get bad overnight. So there's some things we're doing. Uh, or personnel we're putting out there that aren't good enough, and we're going to make those changes. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Tom. Next up is Scott Petrick. Hey, Mike. Scott. Um, following up on that, what do you see out of um, Ray Ray with the Steelers? He looks pretty uh, electric. Yeah, Ray Ray's doing a nice job. So coming out of Clemson a few years ago, I thought he was a good returner, but I, I think he's uh, really starting to hit his stride. I think it's his third year in the league, and uh, he's confident. He's playing strong. He's not a real big guy, but he can break tackles. You know, he's a very dangerous returner because anytime that you have a confident returner, he may not be Cordero Patterson, but he is a, a very, very uh, talented and and uh, very uh, confident, aggressive returner right now. And you know, we we've got to do a better job than we've been doing this year. And um, you know, you got to you know kick him high, kick him far, and we got to cover better. And when you talk about making personnel changes. Um, are there a ton of options available just given, you know, who's playing full-time on offense and defense and who's, you know, injured? Yeah, anytime you look at the injuries, anytime you look at who's going to start on offense or defense, we have to make adjustments on special teams. And and uh, to be quite honest, um, I'll use uh, Taka Taki, you know, Taka, for example, you know, he's playing some defense, but he stepped up and played three phases the other day and did a nice job. And those are the type of guys we need. That's the type of attitude we need in our locker room. And and I think because you give up a big play like that, you know, I got Mac Wilson asking to be on me on kickoff. I got other guys saying, hey, Pref, you know, use me wherever you need me. And and usually that's been the case anyway. And our head coach has done a good job of letting me use players where we need them, especially in certain uh, uh, big plays like punt and kickoff. So we, we've got to do a better job schematically. We've got to do a better job of kicking, getting off blocks and covering and tackling, to be quite honest. And, and uh, we'll be better. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Mary Kay Cabot, we'll have our next question. Hey, Coach, can you talk about um, just how pivotal it was for, for Jamie uh, to pin them back there at the four on that on that one punt that ultimately led to the safety? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Jamie had been hot and cold this year in the first four games, and he really stepped up. He only had the two opportunities in the fourth quarter, but one that you mentioned, Mary Kay, was a obviously a fair catch that we forced at the four-yard line. It was a great punt, great job by Tavier being there to force the fair catch. Um, next play, we got a safety, and that made it a nine-point game. So, obviously, a really big play. And then he had another one after uh, the kickoff turn for a safety. We had a punt from around the plus 50, and we could return it to about the 40, which is a good, solid return there. And we punted him down to the 13-yard line. I mean, I think they had a six, seven-yard return. We tackled him at the 13, and, you know, it's bad field position, when, especially when you're up by nine and in the fourth quarter. So, those two plays, uh, to me, and all the great, the great job Jamie's doing as a holder uh, really helped us win that game the other night. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Next up is Nate Ulrich. Hey, Mike. I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit on the um, Mac Wilson thing you just told us. Like, how often do guys come up to ask you to play special teams, and is it well, about Mac? You, usually it's when you're playing really well. They want to be part of something special. But, you know, guys understand the importance of it. They, they understand the importance of special teams and field position. And, you know, our kickoff team is is our momentum team. We already have them. We just had a pick six. And, crowds into what you're up by 17 points that's the momentum team and and that's what's so disappointing is we we let them back in the game I mean that could have been a, a completely different outcome obviously we won the game we won by nine and we did a lot of good things on teams but you you can't give up that play it, to hurt the momentum so I think there's a lot of guys that uh on the sideline there would have would have you know Andrews and Dale is another guy that comes to mind that you know those guys are going to jump up and, and step up when we need them and and um 
like Port Augustine, who was playing a bunch of D-line, and he stepped up and, and played a little bit extra for us when we had an injury. So, you know, our, our locker room was pretty off in that way, and, and um, I've got the support of our coaches and our players, and, you know, we just got to get it cleaned up. Can you grant Mac Wilson's wish, or because he's coming off the knee, do you have to kind of hold him at bay? No, I mean, he's going to be more involved, absolutely. I'm not going to tell you where, but he will, he'll definitely be more involved. Thanks, Nate. Dan Lobby, we'll go to you. Hey, Coach. We've asked you about, um, you know, obviously your role in kind of helping Kevin Stefanski and, you know, as a first-time head coach. Uh, another guy that people are talking about, too, is Bo Callahan. Can, can you kind of talk about how the impact he's had on this staff and what it means to have a guy like that in the building? You know, Bill, not only is he an outstanding offensive line coach, he's a good man, he's a good person. He cares about coaches. He cares about players. He cares about the success of this organization. I can't say enough good things about Bill. I'm glad he's here. He's done a really nice job for us. And, you know, he's kind of been a sounding board for me because uh, I like to tease him because he's here. I'm not the oldest guy on the staff. I got he and Stump, uh, Bill and Stump are ahead of me. But, um, you know, having the guys like Stump and Bill around and their wisdom and their experiences has, has been invaluable for our staff. And, and I know for Kevin as well. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. We'll go back to Scott Petrick. Mike, it's been a couple of weeks now with uh, Donovan Peoples Jones as your returner. Um, how have you, you know, what, how do you think he's done? Um, and is, you know, is there still area for improvement as far as maybe being more explosive and uh, making guys miss? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think anytime you get a young returner in, and, and he's a, he's a confident young man, but he's a cerebral young man. He needs to see it. He needs to experience it. He's never been a kickoff returner before. So he did do a nice job on the last one. He broke a tackle, got out to the 32 yard line before our, our last field goal drive to go back up by nine. That was a huge play. Um, the, the one punt return opportunity we have the other night, you know, he let the ball hit the ground. He didn't feel comfortable. The ball was spinning weird or whatever. You know, I'd like him to, I'd like to see him at least fair catch that, but we had a lot of room on that one. I mean, we end up getting five yards off the bounce. It could have been a 15, 20 yard return. So the more he experiences it, the, I think the better he'll get. Like when you watched the film of him at Michigan, did he mm -hmm. look, I don't know, more free and easy? Like do you sense that he's still kind of finding his way in this league? And when he does that, it'll make him whatever, even faster maybe? I, I think so. He, did, he does need to play faster. He needs to return faster like he did on that last kickoff return. Uh, I, I tell him he's got to cut it loose. You know, believe in his talent, believe in his ability. Uh, cut it loose. He understands that when the ball's in his hands, he's the most important man in our organization because the ball security is so huge for everybody. Um, so he, he understands that aspect of it. And, uh, you know, I'm confident in, in Donovan, and I think he's only going to get better. Thanks. Tom Weathers, you're next. I just swiped my question, but I got another one for you. Coach, obviously the home team's got something to do with this, but why is it so tough to play at Heinz Field? Well, they got that one open end that um, that the winds come in there, you know, off the river and, and the rivers and and make it difficult to kick. And, you know, so pregame will be big for us. Um, you know, our stadium is no slouch now. Our stadium's pretty tough. We had some weird winds the other night again. And, um, you know, pregame was big for us then, too. And we understand our stadium. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, we understand it. We understand when the flags are blown a certain way, what the winds are doing. But still, every pregame is huge. And no matter where you are, um, no matter what stadium you go to, you have to get used to the winds. You have to have a plan. And, and our kicker, punter, snapper, returners, we talk about those guys, talk about those type of things prior to the game and during the game uh, to adjust when you have to adjust when the winds do. Just in general, though, Coach, do you think players can get kind of spooked by a place when, when they haven't had success there? Um, I think every day is a new day. Every, every uh, weather day is a different day. It could be raining, could be windy, could be snowing later in the year. Um, I don't know if spook's the right word. I think if you're a confident kicker, you're a confident punter, you're a confident returner, um, it doesn't matter where you play. You just have to adjust to the venue that you're playing. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. We'll go back to Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, hey, Coach, you're one of the only coaches on the staff that lived through the Miles Garrett helmet incident from last year. Mm -hmm. How do you think the organization uh, came through that whole ordeal, uh, responded to it, and kind of what, you know, what is the vibe or the talk around the, the halls of, of Berea as you guys head into this game? That's that's old news, Mary Kay, to be honest with you. I'm just real proud of Miles and how he's responded to it. You know, it's tough on him because he's a prideful guy and, and he was criticized by a lot of people and, and he's done a nice job coming through that. And I'm proud of our team and our locker room and, you know, nobody's even talking about it. Uh, I think Coach Tomlin said it best. He's not going to make it a... Uh, uh, what is it, uh, reality TV type comments. I mean, that's a great comment because this is a, a new team, a new game, 
new season, uh, new staff. Um, but, you know, I'm real, I'm real proud of Miles, the way he's playing this year. And, and I think that's what we need to focus on is the positives and what a great job he's doing for us. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go to Scott Petrick for our next question. We'll make this our last one. Hey, Mike, when you spent time here growing up, is there a Brown Steelers moment that you remember more than others? I do know that when Bernie was our quarterback, we won a lot of those games, I think, in the 80s. I know the 70s, they beat us pretty good. Um, unfortunately, one of the ones I remember as a kid was when Turkey Jones picked up and threw Bradshaw down. I know that was kind of a cheap play, but for some reason that sticks in my mind. I thought, you know, I didn't like Pittsburgh, but that was a pretty nasty play. But, uh, you know, he was a good football player at Turkey, and I know Bradshaw, obviously, he's a Hall of Famer. But, um, you know, I just like the 80s better than the 70s because I think we won more of those games. Like, I don't, you can fact check that for me, Scott. I'm not really sure what the record was, but I think we won more than we lost against Pittsburgh when Bernie was our quarterback. Yeah, that's true. I think he swept three straight years. Yeah. Um, Good times. Yeah, Kevin said he's, you know, it's the one and all focus and he's not putting too mm -hmm. emphasis on it being Steelers week. Sure. Is there a balance there, you know, I mean, a, a rivalry, something the fans get juiced up for versus just it's another week? Yeah, I think that's the best way to handle it because our, our team knows this is a very, very good football team. They're a physical, tough football team. They take on the mindset of their coach. I think Coach Tom has done a great job there over the years in Pittsburgh. Got a lot of respect for him and he and his staff. Um, but, you know, this this is the next game, and, and it is a divisional game. It's a conference game. It's a huge game for our football team, but it is the next game, and that's what we're focused on and, and how to beat this team. And every week it changes how you're going to beat a certain opponent, and that's what we've been focused on this week.